Welcome everyone. Welcome to the symposium on the future of computing research. My name is Craig Malbach. I'm the executive director of ISI, and I'm here to welcome our symposium today. Um, this symposium is being sponsored by the USC Information Science Institute in celebration of our 50th anniversary. Um, so in that time, um, ISI has grown to about 400 people, including faculty, staff, and students, and is spread over three locations, the Marina del Rey, which is our primary location, Arlington, Virginia, and Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and then we do research on a wide variety of topics today. So it covers AI, machine learning, cybersecurity, space, microelectronics, quantum computing, and many others. So let me tell you a little bit about some of the reasons from my own experience why I think this symposium is so important. So over the years, we've seen significant changes in terms of how research is funded. So when we started ISI in 1972, ISI was actually funded in a large DARPA block grant, which basically was a single grant to the, to the Institute to fund a whole variety of research on various topics. This is similar to some of the other major universities at the time. So MIT, Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, all had similar sort of block grants from DARPA, and that was just the way research was funded at that period. This continued into the mid 80s, when we transitioned, when DARPA transitioned to funding specific programs. These were typically uh, programs with three-year projects, uh, on various topics, and then you would work on that topic for three years, and then you could apply and get a renewal for another three years. So in that period, you know, uh, a principal investigator might have six years to really focus on some hard problem that they're working on, uh, and and you know really make significant progress on that research. Uh, and at, at that time, the researcher might only have a single project that they're working on. Uh, then in the 90s, it trans sometime it transitioned into sort of the three-year contracts became one-year contracts, and those contracts were then one year with options to get following years for, you know, two, three, four years. Um, uh, and then, you know, once those programs ended in that contract, typically, you know, there wasn't uh, a continuation of that program, but there might be some kind of follow-on program or some other related programs they could apply for, but not necessarily. Uh, then I'd say in the early aughts, uh, projects gradually became smaller. Uh, it became harder to sort of depend on DARPA to uh, fund the sort of long-term research funding. So PIs really began diversifying their funding base, right? So they would turn to other agencies um, such as, you know, National Science Foundation, IARPA, NIH, um, Air Force, DOE, and so on. Um, and, and, you know, today, and we've sort of moved to a period where um, a PI might have six to 12 projects across multiple agencies. And, you know, DARPA might account for only about half of the portfolio for ISI today. Uh, another recent developing computing is, is that computing has really been exploding across organizations, you know, across uh, companies, across universities, where everyone's decided that they need to have their own team to do AI, machine learning, other parts of computing. Uh, so what that means is that competition for talent is extremely fierce, right? So we've seen that, you know, being extremely challenging to both retain and recruit uh, people. And, you know, that's, you know, a, a concern for the, for the computing world at large in terms of, you know, where do we get our next generation of researchers? Um, so in general, so rather than just wait and see what's going to happen in sort of computing research in the future, we thought now would be an excellent time to sort of step back and reflect on, you know, on several things. First, you know, what's the right model to promote uh, computing research? How do we engage the next generation of young researchers to actually go into computing research? Uh, how do we increase the diversity of that set of researchers? And how do we find the important research topics that people should work on next? So these are all important questions that, you know, I'm hoping that we'll uh, be able to address during the symposium. Um, so now I would like to introduce our program chair for the symposium, John Rakowski. Uh, John has, and others have worked tirelessly to put together, I think, an outstanding program for this uh, symposium. Uh, so I think, you know, we have a really great program today in a unique format, and I'm going to turn it over to John now to tell you all about it. Right. We're back. Uh, there are about 300 people registered for this event. Uh, about 90 of you are in person in one of our sites, and about uh, that's a little under 300. Um, about 200 of you are registered remotely. Uh, so we are happy to have all of you here. Uh, I hope you find this an interesting couple of days. Um, 
we're here, the vision of this is that computing research has grown up. Uh, I've been walking around saying that computing research is a teenager at this point. Uh, the last time I wrote that down, review was um, unbelievably hostile. So I'm trying to learn a new way of putting it. But I think the thing that's interesting is, you know, when this field started, it was brand new and anything you could do was cool, right? And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, we've discovered that we are having, that computing research is fundamental to society. We are reshaping the world. We are really building, you know, a sort of a new age of how human progress advances. And so it, it's worth taking the step back and saying, okay, what's shaping this and how should we respond? And that's really the topic of this symposium. So where are we headed as a field? I don't mean what's the next hot topic. Should you do deep learning or shallow learning or uh, go back to theory? I mean, you know, how do we view ourselves as a field? We aren't young anymore. At the same time, we're not physics, right? We don't have 300 years of tradition and decadal meetings to decide what everybody should work on and kind of a very uh, solid academic structure in which we understand how to build on systematized past knowledge. We're in between, we're teenagers. I like the analogy, even if nobody else does. <laughs> um, and so the next question is, you know, okay, what ideas and what paths might help us get there? And that's the things I think we want to talk about over the next couple of days. Um, another quote that I like is uh, from Mark Hill, who was at the University of Wisconsin for many, many years and is now at Microsoft. And his, you know, he said, look, you know, what we're doing is we're moving from what we can do to what we should do. And that's what we're about. So how are we going to do it? Um, our agenda looks like this. Uh, we have our <coughs> the Raman Panchanathan National Science Foundation. Um, and then we have a series of sessions that are basically framed as discussions, right? So, uh, you know, you can see them here. The topics are here. I'll just say a little bit about the first one to give you a sense of what we've tried to do. So in the first one, we have three speakers and a discussant. Um, our first speaker is Liz Bradley, who was for many, many, uh, you know, for a time, the chair of the CRA's uh, Computing Community Consortium. And the, th the purpose of that is to sort of think about visioning for computer science, right? This is a group of people who run, who look to the future. They look out, they try to understand what the longer range, more audacious things we could do are. So she's bringing that perspective. Uh, we have Chris Ramming, who's been instrumental uh, in building industry academic collaborations and understanding how research might advance in that way. Um, and kind of looking at the whole research life cycle from very, very preliminary ideas into realization in the real world. And we have Beth Minat, who is uh, the new Dean of Computing at Northeastern University. And she has a really remarkable story going of a research agenda that's focused on computing for everyone. So what we've tried to do in all of these sessions, I just gave you one as an example, is bring together a set of people from different perspectives who have been really looking at this topic and then uh, as a discussant for this section, we have uh, my dear old friend and colleague, uh, Craig Partridge, who brings a lifetime of experience in bringing together researchers and research ideas and kind of drawing them out and connecting them together. So we have three sessions of that nature. Uh, I want to particularly call out this last one today. This one is different. This is a roundtable discussion among early career researchers. Um, Jim Carosi and Leisha Palin have assembled a, a really re extraordinary panel of early career researchers. They, it, it's interesting enough that we made the session longer. Um, it's going to run to 6.15 at least on the East Coast. I apologize to my East Coast colleagues, uh, but the session turned out to look so cool that we just had to make it one. Um, similarly, tomorrow we have a fireside chat with Eric Horvitz, who is the Chief Scientific Officer of Microsoft uh, and has done a huge number of interesting things in this regard. One more discussion on new models for research. And then we're going to, I'm going to say a little bit more about it in the next slide. We're going to, we have a, a session for small group discussions. And this is simply a chance for you and other people who share your interests to get together and chat in a small group about what you heard, what you wish you'd heard and hadn't, uh, things that, you know, that you, in the sessions that interest you, topics that interest you in this basic space. And then at the end of this, we'll have a very short wrap up session. And, and the, the point here is we see this as just a point in time, it's a little snapshot of a much larger conversation. Uh, we intend to uh, collect the interesting results and ideas that come out of this meeting. Uh, we certainly are looking for to help to do our little bit to carry the conversation forward. We'll put together some larger things and we'll talk a little bit about that in this last session. 
So uh, very quickly on the format, um, it's hybrid. As you, you're here, a bunch of people aren't. Uh, if you're in a pod, we will live stream the session to you on this on a screen. Um, if you're at home remotely or in your office, we don't go to their office anymore. Um, you can hear the live stream on your own computer. And then all the rest of this is really the same for both groups of people, right? There's an opportunity to ask uh, questions of the speakers. You do that by typing into the Q&A function on the platform. There's an opportunity to have informal chat among the participants, which is a chat function. Um, there are drop-in lounges. I'll point to that on the next slide and a little bit more. Uh, so what we're trying to do is give as much balance as we can between the people who are in person and the people who are remote. But obviously, the two experiences are a little bit different. So small group discussion really quickly. If you are in a in-person pod, your discussion group in the first instance is your pod, right? Meet your colleagues, see if you have something you'd like to talk about, get a discussion going for an hour and a half. If you are uh, remote, then you'll notice that in the platform, in the, you find this little function up there called lounges. Um, and you can drop into a lounge. It'll tell you who else is there. We've organized them a little bit by topics, starting with the topics of the sessions. Uh, we will go through at the end of the day today and early tomorrow and look at where we see shared interests. If you fill in the little profile thing where we ask you what you're interested in, we will collect the ones that have sort of the strongest support and make some lounges so people can talk about that. Um, there is one small issue, which is they will only let you stay for 60 minutes. But you can go right back if you like it, or go find a different one, see how it works. Um, so that's the basic idea. This is a little bit of an experiment, the small group discussion. I think doing this in a distributed way is a challenge. Uh, if it works, uh, fabulous. If it doesn't, we'll try better next time. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank a whole mess of people. Um, so our <coughs> program committee put this together, but I would particularly like to call out our internal advisory committee. <coughs> Some of the folks in this committee really helped in a huge way. You know, very often an advisory committee is willing to answer one question for you. Uh, some of these folks got very involved, spent a lot of time with us, got sucked into actually being in the sessions, um, and uh, just were a huge help to pull this together. And then the other set of people that I'd particularly like to single out is the folks who did arrangements and operations uh, here at MIT, and also uh, our event planning consultant, uh, Zena Goodman from uh, an event planning firm. And these people uh, have really put their huge amount of effort into making this work. So thanks for coming, and I hope you enjoy it.